right, let's look at what uh, has been done here. Now, first of all, uh, we 3D printed this entire piece. Uh, so we made it that uh, the motors would align uh, perfectly with like a 45 degree here, a 45 degree there, and a 45 degree here, and then a 45 degree to the viewing screen here. Um, so that needed to be 3D printed because uh, we didn't want to mess up the alignment. Um, so, with that being said, we've got three motors here. Uh, they all have a mirror attached to them. Uh, I tried to get them as much as possible uh, attached, like uh, the center of mass of each mirror attached to the middle, uh, to, to the rotating shaft, so it wouldn't uh, cause too much vibration. Um, but again, it's not perfect. So the way that this works is since you're... Uh, you you have a beam here hitting the mirror. Uh, this mirror here, however, is not perfectly vertical. Um, so when it's going to turn, there's going to be a, a slight wobble to it. So it's going to make it uh, so that when it bounces off, it's, uh, it's going to hit it at a certain spot and vary and cause a nice light beam uh, pattern to appear on the viewing screen. Um, so here you've got the three potentiometers to control each motor individually and here you've got the monochromatic, monochromatic light uh, which is just a red light um, and uh, yeah so you hook it all up to five volts and your ground and uh, yeah let's see it in action so it's putting out a light So as you can see, each motor spins independently uh, with, uh, yeah, spin independently, and uh, you can vary them, vary the speed. Okay, so in order to mount the motors in properly. Uh, well, here's what we did. First of all, you're going to need to put in a gear on top of your uh, motor, like of your motor shaft. So here's how I did it. You align them, then you press down, and they should fit quite nicely. And then the next step would be to mark the center of your uh, mirror. So these are about the shape of a square, so uh, I, I assume that it would be fine to uh, draw a line from corner to corner and corner to corner and the middle part would be the center of mass and then you use hot glue to glue the middle of the shaft to that X to the middle of the X that you just drew and then you would hot glue it like this let it dry and then put it on the uh, motor mounts onto the um, 3D piece so that's how uh, we attach the mirrors to the motors um, and we also use hot glue to put the motors onto the motor mounts of the 3D piece. Okay, so uh, as I said earlier, there's a 45 degree angle from this to here. Okay, so 45 degrees here. And then these two mirrors, well, all three mirrors are, are parallel to one another. Um, so the light beam hits here at a 45 degree angle, uh, reflects at a 45 degree and it repeats that um, so you got to make sure the alignment is properly done and you are able to have a slight wobble because if you don't have a wobble then uh, well if it's too perfect it's not gonna work okay so let's take a closer look at uh, the circuit um, and its components so first off you'll need um, resistors three times uh, 1k ohms then you'll need 330 ohms uh, times 3 you're going to need three potentiometers of 100 kilo ohms each and you're also going to need one resistor uh, of 56 ohms uh, next on the list is C uh, your capacitors will be 100 nanofarads so three times this uh, C2 0 0.01 microfarads uh, three times each as well and here uh, all the diodes that you will be using in the circuit will be 1N4001 uh, these are very standard and for the MOSFETs that I'm using uh, I'm using 3055L 
uh, which is an n-channel MOSFET and uh, but you could also uh, possibly use BJTs if they have the proper specifications for it. Now let's take a look at the circuit. Alright so let's take a closer look at a part of the circuit that repeats two times more. So over here we've got our 5 volt power supply uh, which you'll connect um, your R1 resistor which will also go to your pin 7, so in series, and then you will place two diodes in opposite direction in parallel, and they will both meet with the end of your potentiometer. So both ends right here. Meanwhile, the wiper will be connected to pin 6, which shorts out with pin 2, and also uh, is connected in series to ground with the C1 capacitor. Now, uh, pin 8 and 4 both go to 5 volts, 1 goes straight to ground, 5 is connected in series to ground with the capacitor, C2. And at your pin 3, which is your output, uh, you have your 330 ohm resistor, or 2, which connects to the gate of your MOSFET, okay, or the base of your transistor, whichever you're trying to use. Um, so this will turn on and off, uh, and basically close the circuit or open it and it controls the speed of your motor um, in this case it's M1 but there's also going to be M2, M3 um, here I put a flyback diode to protect uh, any components from getting damage from uh, a spike in negative voltage um, and then your source here will connect straight to ground so again you repeat this uh, two times more so you have three of these um, and yeah, so you're using the LM555. So now that we've evaluated what one part of the circuit looks like, let's look at it uh, like all together. So you're going to basically wire them up all in parallel to one another. Uh, so you have the 5 volts over here, uh, which basically feed, well, gives power to all the integrated circuits, all the motors as well. Um, so they all use the same 5 volts. So make sure you have enough current from your power supply to drive all these different motors. Okay. Um, so that's how you wire all of it together. And the one part that I didn't show yet is this part here. Where I take 5 volts, I put a resistor of 56 ohms in series to uh, the laser. Uh, this is just an LED symbol, but for simplicity's sake, I just decided to draw the LED instead of the laser beam. Um, so yeah, so over here I drew uh, the, the the shafts of the motor, and here is the mirrors. So you're gonna want to connect those shafts to mirrors, um, and yeah, that's that's it for the circuit. Okay, so. Uh, in this case, in these circuits, we're using a PWM signal. Now, we use the LM555 to achieve this. Uh, so imagine that these, this signal here, uh, over time, is at pin 3, uh, and it's going to vary between 0 and 5 volts. Um, now, with the potentiometers, you're able to adjust the duty cycle. Now, we'll see what that is in just a sec. So, when I turn the potentiometer to... Uh, less than half, okay, let's say here, um, what will change will be the T on versus the T off, okay? Uh, so T on is the amount of time that it stays on, and T off is the amount of time that it stays off. Uh, so T on, T off will change, but the period, so between this point and this point, will not change. So it's a percentage of that time uh, that stays on that we define as a duty cycle. So in this case, uh, the duty cycle is about 33%, so you could see uh, one-third of it is uh, on, so it means the duty cycle is about one-third, uh, so it's about 33%. Um, so this will make it so that the average voltage will be about 33% of your 5 volts. So this is what your motor will see, is basically the average. So this is what your motor sees and that's how you're able, you're able to control its speed. Now, 
if I turn the potentiometer of like more than half, you're going to see something like this. Uh, so the T on will increase while T off will decrease. So that makes the duty cycle twice as big in this case. Um, so T on remains high for a lot longer and T off for a lot shorter. So that makes duty cycle about 66%. 66% of 5 volts will give you the V average that your motor will see. So that's how you're able to control the speed of your motors. Um, so in this case we're using a MOSFET to drive the uh, to drive these uh, motors because uh, our LM555s cannot supply enough current so we need to find a power supply that is able to give us enough current to drive those motors.